Whiskey. Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Um, today I have something from uh, Weems Malts, the high blended malt scotch whiskey batch strength, batch number two. So this was one of 9,000 bottles. Uh, this is 55.5%. And the amazing part for me is the price. So this is how the bottle looked here in 2019 when this was produced. There was another batch in 2017 that was with 54.5%. Uh, this is 55.5. The amazing thing for me is the price, 35 euros 90. This is 35 euros for 55%, no age statement, hive whiskey from Weems. So whiskey base number 126379. So the first batch was th uh, 6,000 um, bottles. The second batch was 9,000 bottles. Uh, this is part of a series. There's the Spice King, which will be my next video. Also batch strength that has 40, 58%. And there's even a peated. This is 57%. Um, peak chimney. So all of these under 40 euros, which I think is an amazing, an amazing price. Now, my um, challenge was, what can I find out there that has a price tag around 35 euros and has about 55% ABV? I couldn't find anything. That's, that's, that shows how amazing this whiskey is, at least in the value on the paper for the money. But I did find something that went on sale, and it's at 39 euros. This is Kleinlich, um, Game of Thrones. So just going to pull this out here. All right, very, very good. So um, this is 51.2%, and it's on sale, at least over here in Germany, on, with Amazon. Hmm, we can buy alcohol by Amazon for a price of 39.90. All right, so this is going to be my um, comparison whiskey. Why? Well, because basically the hive in kind of helps us to think about something called honey. And honey is something that has a bees wax, and wax is something we, we associate with Kleinlisch. And so I hope there's a little bit of Kleinlisch in here. Now, there might be Deanston in here as well. Um, Roy from Aquavita really, really loves his Deanston. And I, I must admit, I've never done a video, not even on my German channel, about the Deanson 18 yet. So I bought a bottle, it arrived today, I looked at it and was like, oh look, 18 years old and in first fill bourbon casks. Ta-da, our secret. So here we don't have that first fill, and here we don't have that first fill either. What we do have here is a blended malt whiskey. Now I hate the term blend, because as soon as I put two barrels together, what do I do? I blend them. But it's still a single malt because it's from one distillery. Now I have a single scotch. Um, I sorry, I have a single malt, um, and I have a blended scotch. Blended scotch means a mix of grain and single malt together. And then I have the wonderful creation, which used to be called vatted, which I like much better. Um, it's actually called blended then malt, which means we take single malt from different distilleries and we blend them together. So this is 100% barley. This is 100% made on, on pot stills, but it's just different distilleries blended together, blended malt. Now, um, Chevez Regal. Oh, okay, here's my Mitsunara. Chevez Regal, for example, is a blended scotch. Johnny Walker, blended scotch. You do have 20, maybe 40% max, usually 15 or 20% of single malt in here, and the rest would be grain, which is much cheaper to make because it's made on a continuous um, still, which Mr. Mr. Coffee actually invented to create industrial alcohol. This is still a little bit of hand craftsmanship. So even on the back it says here, um, batch strength limited edition is a handcrafted malt whiskey brought to you by the Weems family. Uh, Weems is how you pronounce it. Now I'm going to rant for one second. Ah, probably going to be two minutes. All right, so handcrafted. Whiskey today, I've been to over 50 different distilleries. Usually they arrive, the grains, in this case 100% malted barley, arrives in a truck tractor trailer. So they actually put it up, put it in the silo. The silo pumps it with vacuums through tubes into the mill. The mill crushes it. No hand touches anything. That grit, which is milled together, goes into the wash tun. Not, not a hand touches it. 
from the wash done, it goes to the wash backs. Um, the only thing that might actually be hand done is sometimes I've seen people put in the yeast via hand into those wash backs. Let's it sit there for, I don't know, five days, maybe seven days, depends on where you're at. And then it's pumped automatically into the pot stills. Pot stills, no one touches it. So after pot stills, it goes in the receiver tank. From the receiver tank, it goes in through usually like a gasoline pump into the barrels. That's the only time a hand touches this uh, whiskey at all, and it doesn't because that's how you do that. The barrel is touched a little bit. At the moment today, we usually have a lot of racked warehouses, which means that barrels put on a pallet. The pallet is then transported via forklift um, into the warehouse where it sits for the next 8 to 12 or to 15 years and then it's pulled out. Usually even then the only person touches that pallet once to put it on a nice roll rolling scheme. That rolling scheme brings it into the, um, the processing area. There could actually be a robot that actually bores down in the bunghole, pulls it out, pushes that cast a little bit more, it empties and no one touches it. It empties into a big vatting container. The vatting container is pumped then into bottles. On the bottling line, the only time you might actually touch the bottle is when you take the individual bottling, the bottle, and the box where you put it into maybe a bigger box, and then a machine usually wraps it around. And the first time a real, real hand touches this bottle is when I take it out of the box. And yet it says here, handcrafted. <laughs> My rant is over. All right, so um, yes, Weems probably did with their hands take the different individual samples, blend them, try them, but the uh, a real process of making this bottle, I think I'm the only real person that ever touched this bottle, let alone the spirit in it. All right, which is good. Which I don't want people touching my whiskey, do you? No, of course not. It should all be, at least in this um, 9,000 bottles, should be all automated, I hope and I think. All right, good. On the nose, I really, really like this whiskey. This whiskey has a beautiful orange peel moment. There's a little bit of honey in there. There's a tiny little bit of wood, and there's a little bit of a maltiness in here. This is a very, very nice nose. I really, really like this whiskey, also from my German video. All right, so it says here, I like this one, um, created from single malts with signature sweet whiskies that combine to form complex characters of citrus fruit, floral notes, and sumptuous honey. Sumptuous. I tried translating the word sumptuous into German. The only word I had was sexy. <laughs> How else can you translate sumptuous? All right, so very, 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 ooh, curves and so on, right? Uh, sumptuous. All right, this is a fantastic whiskey on the nose. I really, really like it. A little bit of barrel char towards the end there I get, um, but still nice. And the interesting thing is 55.5%, beautifully integrated. Not a thing where I'm gonna go, ooh, oh no, it's burning. No, beautifully done. Now the Kleinlisch has more of a darker, more of a, um, a maltiness, more of a woodiness has a little bit more for me of a pine type of honey. And this is a little bit more of that honey bear that we had in America. A little bit sweeter, more industrial type of honey. All right, let's try this. And this is where this whiskey challenges me. Let's say that. All right, cheers. There's a lot of bitterness in here. There's a barrel char bitterness. There's an orange peel bitterness. There's a citrus type of bitterness. I'm not a great fan of this at 55.5%. But <laughs> it's still okay. This would be like a C minus type of whiskey. But there's a magic thing called water. Yes, I know God created this at batch strength. It's not barrel proof, it's not cast proof, it's batch strength. So Weems decided to do 55.5%. I'm going to dilute it down to 43%. Cheers. Mmm. 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 
to be honest, I hit more 40% than 40, 46, 48, which I wanted. Mmm, um, very nice. Now that orange peel turns into a, a candied orange. It's interesting. Um, if you take the whiskeys from 55.5 down to 55, down to 54, down to 53, if you can do that incrementally, you'll actually find the sweet spot. For me, that was about 48%. I missed it the first time, sorry. Um, that turns into a wonderful candied moment. The candied moment, though, the more alcohol is added, or, re or the less diluted it becomes, the more bitterness is in there, and it turns into something not what I want. I diluted it down to 25%, and my video is fantastic. It was oily, it was waxy, it was orange, there was vibrancy, there was honey, it was, it was beautiful. It wasn't a whiskey anymore, it was just a watered-down whiskey. But about 48% is where this whiskey shines, my personal opinion. I don't know how batch 1 was, I don't know how batch 3 will be. I think um, every two years they bring out a new one. So this was 2019 and 2017, they brought the first batch, and I can assume that in 2020, sorry, 2021, maybe even 2022, they'll bring out the third batch, and there'll be different bottles as well. So we have a problem with our bottle design, at least from the point of view of a shop owner. This takes up too much shelf space. I can put two of these or three of these, which would I rather have? Shelf space is expensive. We collectors, we whiskey geeks, we whiskey nerds know um, <laughs> shelf space, oh no. I actually have here two shelving units beside, behind each other, so I can go six deep here. And so I have room for a lot of whiskey. Over there I have more shelves where I actually go also six deep. Um, so I can put a lot of whiskey into these two rooms that I have here. Um, a shop can't do that. A shop can only actually show the whiskey in the front. They can go six deep if they have a case and they will have six whiskeys behind each other. But you cannot have six different whiskeys behind each other because you can't sell something you can't see. And so shelf space is very, very, very expensive. So they changed, um, at least for the normal hive, for the normal Spice King, and for the normal peat chimney, which I assume will be also for the batch strength here, they made them more smaller bottles and also more um, likable to the industry of um, commerce out there in this world. Which, of course, is weird because online, who cares <laughs> if, that's a ha if it's a high skinny bottle or a dumpy like this is. All right, with water, this actually gets a, um, a C+. Um, I'm going to actually give it, if it's a 48%, this is a C++ um, B- minus minus whiskey. Now, um, the value for money, I'm still mind blown, 35 euros. And you get, actually get more whiskey when you water it down. So it's like a bottle and a third if you put enough water in there to get it exactly right. And that for a price of about 35 euros 90. Amazing. Also that, I'm going to give it a C++ B minus minus. A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want to. D, you don't need to. F, why was it even made? So this is actually a very, very good recommendation if you can find the hive in the batch strength. Be careful. There's hives out there that are 46%. I'm not sure if they're as good. They're almost the same price, so go for the batch strength if you can find that. Very, very good stuff. Just as a comparison real quick, the Kleinisch. So, by the way, this at cast strength, as I showed you, does, does this. Watch what this happens. Wow. This finish is absolutely fantastic. There's been days where I would like to spit this out, especially if I have the Clannish 14 first of all, and then this. It just doesn't sink. Um, but if I have this and something else that's basically cast strength and go back to this, it's like, oh, this has a lot of merit. This is nice. I really like this. Um, you can say what you want to about the Game of Thrones series. I'm very, very thankful that they put out a clan lush at this cast strength. Um, it doesn't say cast strength on it. It says batch um, House of Terrell growing strong, limited edition, 51.7%. 51.2%. We don't have much Kleinish whiskey out there. We have the 14 and yeah. And so it's great to have something else, at least of a limited edition. 
Um, some of the shops are throwing this out at a reduced price. Maybe pick up one, have it on, um, bunker it and put it uh, away for the future because who knows when something like that will ever appear again. Hmm. All right, thank you very much. Uh, please like, please subscribe, please tell others, please share this video with others if you'd be so kind on social media. Um, I don't know where you do it, Facebook, um, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Snapchat, wherever you do it, um, you can find hashtag Whiskey Jason there. Thank you very much um, for being part of Twitter, being part of this community, and all the best. And by the way, there was a video about this already, but only batch one. <laughs> That's why I could say I could do my own video about this as well, because batch two was there. All the best. Bye-bye.